name is Shadea. My name is Shadesh. It could be breakfast, lunch, or supper, or even snacks. But before anything else, soul food first! Yesterday, we started our lesson on the spiritual Christian and we learned about what a spiritual Christian is not. Number one, it is not being religious. Spirituality is not based on religious affiliation or active involvement in religious affairs. Number two, it is not being prayerful. Prayer is not a barometer of spirituality. It is not about praying in certain time, in certain place, in certain direction. Number three, it is not being emotional. It is not about crying on a touching and sentimental music or being moved by the encouraging sermon. Number four, it is not being solemn or quiet. It is not about being grave or having bowed head or long face. Number five, it is not being ceremonial. It is not about doing sacraments regularly or kneeling at the altar, looking at the statues or pictures that defines spirituality. Number six, it is not about projection or appearance. It is not about what we do on Sunday morning, the clothes that we are wearing, the Bible that we are carrying, or the attitude, the refined behavior that we are showing to people on Sunday morning. So, if these things do not define a spiritual Christian, who or what is a spiritual Christian? Uh, Christian, and that is our question this morning. Now let us go back to our text in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, reading from verse 15 to 16. The Bible says, But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? but we have the mind of Christ. Now, from this passage above, there are a few things that we can learn. Number one, it is evident that the spiritual Christian stands far above the carnal Christian and the babe in Christ, and certainly above the natural man as far as spiritual discernment is concerned. Number two, he judges or discerns all things. From simple milk of the word to deep things of God. Number three, none can judge or discern him. It says, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Why is that? Because he is spiritually above this natural man, babe in Christ, and carnal Christian. And so these three classifications or categories are not qualified and able to judge this spiritual Christian. Number four, these three have not come to know Christ, His Word, and even Jesus Christ in a more intimate way yet as uh, the spiritual Christian did. So they have not experienced what this spiritual Christian experienced, and so they have no way of judging the spiritual Christian because these three, they are lower than the spiritual Christian as to spiritual discernment. Number five, he has, the spiritual Christian has and understands the mind of Christ. Now, also, when we go to other passages of the scriptures, we will discover, we will find that he is among those of whom Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14 describes. What is that? It says, But strong meat, that's the solid food, belongeth to those or to them that are full age, even those by who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern 
both good and evil. The spiritual man has a spiritual interest or desire and understanding of the deep things of God. But, you know, we've been talking about deep things of God. And Apostle Paul described that this is the meat of the word, the solid food, the wisdom. And he also talks about he proclaimed these to the spiritual people. But actually, the question is, what is these deep things of God that Apostle Paul is talking about? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7 7 talks about this. It says, However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature yet, not wisdom of this age. Verse 7 says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Now, Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 is talking about this as the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is the gospel of grace. This is the dispensation of grace that God has committed to Apostle Paul to preach to the Gentiles and then to the entire world. This is the body of truth that he calls the mystery hidden in Christ before the foundation of the world. This is what he calls my gospel. Apostle Paul claims this as his gospel and he categorizes this as the deep things of God. Now, we have salvation and then we have this edification that comes from understanding the my gospel, the mystery, and the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ that Apostle Paul received and he has the obligation to share and preach this to others. In Romans chapter 2 verse 16, talking about my gospel, it says, In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, and it says, according to my gospel, the basis of the judgment that is to come is based upon the gospel that Apostle Paul received from the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we have Romans 16 verse 25. It says, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began. Apostle Paul is talking about his gospel that will be the basis of of edification and establishment of the believers. That's why Apostle Paul, he keeps on teaching and preaching the believers that they have to understand this, these deep things of God. Now, we will talk more about this gospel of Apostle Paul that he received from the Lord Jesus Christ as our lesson and program progress. Now, the spiritual Christian does not wait until heaven to learn these things, these deep things of God. Why? Well, it is very clear in the scriptures that God already revealed these teachings, these lessons to us. In 1 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible says, But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. And for the Spirit searches all things, yet, the, yes, the deep things of God. So, this truth that Apostle Paul described as the solid food, the meat of the Word, the deep things of God, that he is talking about that body of truth that he received from the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can be edified and we can be spiritual when we are learning this. These things are revealed through the scriptures. We have them before our eyes and we can hold this truth. We just need to learn and study and understand and then receive this. And we will be uh, on the way to spirituality. Now to understand these deep things of God, it is not based upon superior human wisdom. You don't have to say, I need to study first in university. I have to be brilliant first to be able to comprehend these deep things of God. I mean, the Bible talks about that we can understand this not 
through the wisdom of the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 says, Not through the wisdom of this world. That explains why so many believers, humble believers, they are rejoicing because they have received and understood this uh, revelation of the mystery than the great theologians and religious leaders that they have not yet come to the understanding of the word rightly divided. Everyone can learn this precious truth, the wonderful message of grace in this dispensation of grace that God through Jesus Christ has given to and through Apostle Paul for us Gentiles. But we have to understand also that while understanding of this body truth that we have is so important, these deep things, solid word of God and the wisdom from God, these are extremely important, but these are not enough. It is not enough to know God's word in this present dispensation. It is not enough to learn the Bible. It is not enough to be wise and ha having the understanding of the deep things of God. We also have to balance this with understanding of right Christian living. There should be a balance between doctrine and practice. There should be a balance between the right believing and the right living. Colossians chapter 1 verse, uh, verses 9 to 10, the Bible says, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's the prayer of Apostle Paul that we will be filled with knowledge and spiritual understanding. But Paul did not stop there because it's not enough to learn the Bible and the Word of God and the deep things about God's Word for our present time. Verse 10, the Bible says, that you walk worthy of the Lord. Having this understanding, this should be the basis of our walk in the Lord and to live fully pleasing and being fruitful in every good work. And not just that, but also continually increasing in the knowledge of God. So, if you see, there is a balance between right believing, that's doctrine, and right living, that is the practice that uh, we have to do. Well, that's all for now, beloved. Uh, I hope that you learned something today. Have a blessed weekend and we will see you on Sunday during our fellowship with our Sunday morning message. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your soul food.